Hey everybody, I'm James. Grab your Bibles. Let's go through the Word. Okay, sad moments here. <clears throat> Let's just keep going. Luke 22, beginning in verse 54. This is about Peter disowning Jesus. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him and, see, and seated, excuse me, a servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. This is God's word. All right, Peter, absolutely zealous, uh, saying, you know, no one will take you. You know, like Peter is just, he just cuts off somebody's ear. He obviously loves Jesus. But he's scared. <laughs> He has a moment here when he's just watched everything that he thought was going to happen did not happen the way that he thought it was going to. We can relate to that, right? We can relate to the fact that sometimes when things don't go the way we think they do, we, we get scared or we grumble. But this narrative finds its climax in the book of Acts, okay? This is not so much about... Christ fail or Peter's failure, excuse me, but Christ's ability to restore. I'm going to repeat that. This is not so much about Peter's failure as it is about Christ's ability to restore and what happens when Christ restores someone. So I say this finds its climax in its book of in the book of Acts. But the restoration of, of Peter happens in the book of John. Three times Peter denies Jesus Christ. Three times, Jesus said, if you love me, feed my lambs, in different various way, and varying ways. And that's recorded in the book of John, I believe, in chapter 21, if you want to check me on that. But what happens when Peter is restored? Peter boldly proclaims Christ, and so many come to saving faith and are baptized into him. Thousands. Peter just becomes, once, once he gets rightly aimed... Man, he, he becomes absolutely an example to be followed in how he proclaims the good news of God's kingdom. But let's look at this failure. Peter following from a distance, as if not to be seen near him, as if not to be acquainted with our Lord and Savior. He followed from a distance. Some things happened that Jesus said would happen, the denial three times. Then it says, then Peter remembered. Peter remembered. And he went outside and wept bitterly. <laughs> Do you weep bitterly if you don't care about what you've done? Peter knew he sinned against the Lord. Peter let down his friend. Peter let down his God. But we see he's restored in the book of John. What a beautiful thing this is. I said once before, a few episodes ago, Jesus' only interest in our sin is to get rid of it. This betrayal, it's not like Judas's. It's not the same at all. What do we see Peter do? He weeps, and then in the book of John, we see Peter be restored. And then from that moment on, Peter knew what he was about. So I ask you today, do you know what you're about? Do you follow this? Do you, do you follow Christ from a distance? Are you not acquainted with him? Is your life not wrapped up? Do you not take up your cross daily, meaning dying to your desires, and follow Jesus Christ? How closely knit are you to the Lord? Do you deny him in action? Do you, do you deny him in word? We 
absolutely must be proclaiming li- proclaiming Christ with our words and our actions. Our lives are a reflection of who we are. And I'll take it a step further. When you're alone with God, that's exactly who you are. What does that look like? So again, let's not let's not focus too much on this failure. Let's focus more on Christ's restoration in John 21. Yes, Peter failed. Christ restored. And then what is the what is the uh, the uh, oh my goodness the word eludes me. What is the result? What is the result? I fail. Christ restores me. I proclaim Christ. Let's follow that example. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how it changes us, how it reconstitutes us, how it crushes us, how you have given examples of people who are failures just like us. How you give us the word of a perfect Savior who lifts up those people. A high priest who can identify with us and empathize with us and intercedes for us and restores us powerfully so that we can do his will. We thank you for Jesus, and it's in his name and for his sake we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Go preach Christ. Remember to like, subscribe, and click that bell.